He is known as the lead singer of the Irish folk rock band Bible Code Sundays. Now Ronan McManus has a new album out called Strawberry Hill and he is joining me today for this interview. Hey Ronan. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. (laughs) How about you? How's the gig? Yeah, good. Yeah, I'll just, um, yeah, I just a little, uh, been doing some uh, work down at the college, the local college, so I had to go down there tonight. So uh, it's, it's been good. Yeah, it's been. Okay. Just keep, 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 keep me very busy, so that's good. Okay. The first question I have is this one um, Strawberry Hill reissue has, um, you know, 22 songs. So I also discovered demos inserted with the tracks. So how did uh, demos get there? Well, um, I, re- I released Strawberry Hill album in 2010 and never really pushed it. Mm-hmm. Um, and just because I, I was so busy with the band and I'd never really done that. I never really did anything with it, you know. Um, and so when I came to sort of look at, at um, you know, giving my, my, my solo work a bit more of a push, you know, I decided I'm, I'm going to sort of embark on a, on a new kind of uh, a, new, a new push with it really a new, whole new Spain new start really I found all the demos and I thought you know I always liked like, I always liked hearing that when, uh, when you know when I was by, you know by singles and by albums I liked I, I liked the, the reissues when he, and hearing the songs when they're in their very early form and you know basically I haven't charged it any more than the 11 track version um, because I, I, I felt that obviously they were, their demos are quite rough recordings. I didn't want to didn't want to charge any more for the for the for having more tracks on it. It was really a matter of just giving people a bit more to listen to. Really, I think just giving people something more interesting. And although you know, although I, I do love the songs as I recorded them, you know, in the studio, the studio versions, I, I do. I'm very proud of all of, of those versions. The demos offer something a bit more intimate and a bit more the something um, that I like those like some well, some of the songs I like the demos more than I like than I like the studio versions because uh, maybe I don't know maybe it captured a um, it was just like most of the, the kind of demos that I'd done in, in my bedroom just after I'd written the song so for me the demos sort of capture a bit more of a, a raw element of the of of the song in its natural form than a studio version could ever do, you know. So there's, a, there's something about that I, I liked, and I thought, well, maybe other other people might might see the same thing in it, and there might be something interesting for them to listen to. That was all it was, really. Oh, okay. And also, Strawberry Hill is an album that has a lot of ballads. Do you prefer introspective songs as opposed to upfront uh, rock anthems? Um, personally, I, I listen to a lot of acoustic artists. I like... I like I love I love depressing music. <laughs> I like I like sad music. Uh, I've, uh, I and I like um, I, I do I do I do prefer um, myself to listen to more stripped down music, more acoustic, more raw. Um, I do like that one man one guitar kind of thing. It really there's something about that setup that is just very natural and very direct. I like that. Um, and I, I look for, always look for even with rock bands. I always look for the more intimate songs uh, on an album. I, I, I was I find if you know if a band doesn't have um, at least one intimate song on the, on their album, then I, I feel like maybe they they they're not I've not connected with them as much as I as I have. And I've, I don't know. There's, there's something about kind of the bearing of your soul of bearing all your all your feelings in your kind of um the rawest elements of 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 you the, that really get, only really comes across effective effectively i think in a in a in a ballad and what it really was i mean about strawberry hill was basically a collection of songs <clears throat> that i had written over over a period of time that didn't fit with um the bible code sundays and it didn't fit with the band I was in when I wrote some of them, I wrote, some of the songs I wrote years and years ago, and they didn't fit with the bands I was in then. Um, and so it was a really collection cl- 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 of songs that I decided just to record, no matter whether they were slow or fast or anything. I decided to just to discard all of that and just record the songs that I had, mm. and not 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 worry about whether whether they were fast or slow, and just 
and it's, it, it kind of captures a, a kind of a, a period of my life when I was living in Twickenham, in, you know, in Strawberry Hill, basically. It's a place just there, just in, in London, you know. And um, I was single at the time and I was, you know, broken up with my, my long-term girlfriend at the time. And, and it was where, you know, my life was... I was thinking about things a lot and I was, you know, weighing things up and, and the, the, you know, the, the songs kind of capture a, a time of my life where, you know, the fact that they're kind of slow songs or ballads or, you know, the, the bit more introspective, as you say, that, that, that reflected my mood at the time. And I think it's, uh, it's a fair snapshot of those few years of my life. Yeah, it's also true that uh, you know you can um, well most artists can uh, can attest to this that uh, depression can really bring the best out of you, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I've, I think uh, I know that Chris Difford from Squeeze, um, he was one, one the one half of the uh, of, of of the songwriting duo in uh, in Squeeze. He used to love writing with a hangover. That was his, but he, he's since, because, he's since realized he's an alcoholic and he's, and he's, and he's, and he's kicked the booze. Um, he stopped drinking completely, but he says if he could have the hangover without the drinking, then he, then he would take that <laughs> because he used to find that all his best work was when he was, when he was hung over. And that's obviously kind of a very sort of depressed state. It's I don't know. It's a kind of a, it's a time, it's a time when you, when you really, weigh things up and, and you really look into your search into yourself or as when they you're say, going through something like, like that you know yeah like they say it's a moment of clarity right yeah i think so it's a, i think it's it's when you it's when you search when you're in that sort of time you're searching for answers and you search and you you think about things more deeply than when you're kind of in a happy mood you kind of you know and you have if you're in a happy time of your life you just tend to kind of skip along and, and just kind of get on with things but when you're when you're going through something that's that's a negative time in your life and you're trying to find the positive that's when you're just when you look into yourself and you try to define where you're going what you're doing what you know why you're feeling what the way you're feeling and you, you question everything a lot more and i think in that way you you that you hopefully you find the answers eventually, but at that time when you're searching, you, you you search yourself before you search anywhere else, or at least you should, and you know try to fix things inside you before before and hope hopefully that they will reflect on the things outside of you and the people around you. But I think when you're that when you're in that kind of a mood, um, you really find out a lot about yourself, and you can you really, I think you really. It, it opens it up to, to writing much more meaningful songs, you know, songs that have a lot more weight to, to the words because there's, there's there's more. I don't know. You you you're asking more of yourself, right? And also, let's talk about the video one more time. I think it's really beautifully conceived and executed. And how did you get the people uh, in the vi uh, video to get together and uh, you know? Uh, do the little slogan thing. It's it's really beautiful the way. They yeah, I just I, I I've, I mean, uh, through Facebook and and uh, social media, um, there's we've got quite an audience with the Bible codes, and some people follow some people from the Bible Code Sundays um, fan base follow my solo stuff too. So I just kind of put it out there to say, look, I'm I'm looking for. Um, people to, you know, to to be involved in this video and I want you to send a video of yourself holding a picture up of, of a loved one that you've lost and a message to what you would say to that loved one if you saw if you could see them one more time um and I didn't quite um I, did, I didn't quite think it would be as powerful as it as it is um, it really surprised me and the reaction that it gets when people when people watch it it's been getting I've been getting a great reaction from it, you know, and it really does touch people, and I think it's it's really hard to, to watch it and not have a tear in your eye, you know, because it's this this is real, it's real people. It's a powerful it's song. It, is it? I mean, the, the, yeah, I mean the the song itself. Um, I've always had kind of good reaction to that song. People people kind of get it straight away, you know, because you know I think it's something that everybody's 
been through and, and uh, you know most people if you haven't if you haven't lost somebody close to you then you're a very very lucky person you know but everyone's lost somebody pretty much or you know or something you know that they've that they've held dear yeah. and to have that i mean the, it was it was the, the the realization for me i i hadn't lost anybody very very close to me in my life when i wrote the song but it was from speaking to my wife and she had lost an ex-boyfriend of hers years ago years before I met her um, and from talking to her about that situation it all that there was a lot of people kind of making speeches in pubs and trying to you know, doing the, these grand gestures and the people who were closest to the, to the guy that died like my wife and, and, and his cousins and things they were all secular friends at the time they just said I just miss him that's it I just that's it there's nothing else to it. I just miss seeing him. And it was that simplicity of loss that really hit me. And I thought, well, yeah, it was just, it's just that the simple thing of you're not going to see that person again. And uh, there's not much more to say than I miss that person. I miss seeing them, you know? Yes, yes. And it was, and it was that, that, that simplicity that really hit me. So I kind of, but that's, when I went to, that's when I wrote the song and the, you know, when I asked people to, to send, send their videos in, I got I got a fairly decent response from it, and I was quite surprised um, at the at the effort that some of them went to to get it to get it done, you know, to 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 create the shot that they sent, you know. And one in particular is the guy holding his 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 baby, and he sent sending messages to his wife that he's lost, and that really that's a real tough one because obviously that baby is lost yes, lost yes. a mother. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the when he drops. Is he he holds up a sign saying we will be the change, and as, and as he drops the bit of paper, and he's got a photo, he's, he's, the shot's taken from above, and he's got photos on the ground all around him, big blown up photographs, and then as he drops it, it just falls perfectly in line line with one of the photos. Just one of those things. I think it just it just happened, you know, and it and I just think that uh, it, because it's real. It's not stage. It's not. These aren't actors. These are real people. That it just hits home so much more, and it's really become something else. Other, you know, it's something I can look. I can sit back now and almost distance myself from it because it's 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 not. It's no, no longer just my song. Do you know what I mean? It's no longer. It's just it's the, the, the the video has become something else, and it's become a part of all these people that have that are in the video, and it's 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 something I can really be proud of. I think that you know. These and the people that contribute can, can be proud of, you know. And you know, I think it's really powerful. I'm very, very proud of it. Okay, so uh, like uh, when you perform, okay, uh, what's the, you know, do you have people come up to you after the show and tell you how uh, the the songs that you perform really have this impact in their lives? You usually get those. Yeah, I mean, I found, I found that um, you know I, when I, I play all the time, I'm, I'm, I play I'm a full time musician, so I play all the time. So I play a lot of gigs when I'm playing covers and things as well. But when I do, when I do throw my own songs into the set, when I do play them, I do find people do do then re request them again, and people, you find people sort of sing along with them. And uh, I don't know whether it's a testament to people need live music; they need maybe these sorts of um, songs more than people realize, you know, and I, I, yeah, I do find people, people do, do start to request my own songs. Um, I, th I try to write songs that kind of people will get, you know, try to, try to write songs, by writing songs about my, my own life experience, I find that people have, you know, these aren't unique experiences I'm having, these are very common experiences, love mm -hmm. and loss and things like that. I mean, these are universal themes and I think, you know whether I found a, a different way, a new way to put it, or a way that's that people get. I don't know what it is, but the the, the, the songs do seem to connect with people, and I'm um, very proud of that fact. And I'm very ha very ha very happy when people come up and ask. It's great when people come up and ask you for your song, you know, rather than saying, you know, can you sing a Beatles song? You know, it's just it's great. <laughs> I, mean, I, love, I love the Beatles, but <laughs> it's much more of a, it means so much more when people ask you for your own songs. Okay, yeah, talking about the Beatles, okay, what's your opinion about the covers and also if you do want to cover uh, songs, uh, who are the artists that you would like to cover? If ever? 
Yeah, I, I've, I, I try to, I try to find, I try to find songs and do them in a different way. Like um, I do a version of Eleanor Rigby. It's just a guitar and voice version, you know. So <clears throat> there's obviously there's a string quartet on the on the original. And to find songs that people maybe don't expect you, expect you to do, you know, and everything from all sorts of classic songs. Um, and then some modern things as well, you know, so singing modern songs and finding songs that people don't don't expect is what I like. I like, I like to try and do and uh, <clears throat> stripping songs back so that you know if it's a big heavy rock song, you know, stripping it back to an acoustic version, and you realise how good some songs are. You don't they don't quite notice how good a song it is because it's such maybe such a loud rock kind of song, you know. And then when it's when it's stripped back, it's you know there's. There's so many great songs that have been written over the years. Um, so I just try to try to play songs that I like. And hopefully that, that comes across, you know. Because if, if I can sing it with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of love for the song, then, you know, maybe I'm doing it... I don't think I'm doing it justice, you know. I think there's no problem with, with playing covers. And, you know, I think, you know, I've got my favourite artists and my favourite songs over the years and... I get a chance to play those, you know. It goes back to the days when you very first start playing music and you just, you know, you, you want to be that person, you know. For me, it was it was Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam when I was 15, 16 years old. I had long hair and I wanted to be, I wanted to be Eddie Vedder or Kurt Cobain, you know. Those, those were my, my heroes at that time and I loved, I loved the, the passion and the, and the sort of, Obviously, being a teenager at the time, you know, this kind of rebellious nature of that, you know. But then as I got a bit older, I kind of really start to, to admire, like, Neil Finn from Crowded House. Oh, yeah. So an and, amazing artist. Oh, absolutely. I mean, his lyrics are un- unreal. The imagery in his lyrics is, un- is unreal. And I think it, it reflects where he's from, reflects New Zealand. And you, this, he's, I mean, it's obviously such a dramatic landscape there you know and it comes across in his lyrics and i just love the way i love the way he puts things and ron, ron sexsmith is a canadian singer songwriter i love the way that he writes a song as well he's it's this is it's this sort of craft this is songwriting craft I, there's certain people i really admire um and i could listen to neil finn's voice all day i, I think he's got a great voice right um you know, and that I, I just love that. Um, with the Beatles stuff, I actually prefer the the earlier Beatles stuff. And a lot, of, a lot of people, it's cooler to like the later Beatles stuff when it got a bit kind of weird. Yeah. But I liked all the, I liked all their early pop songs, songs like "Love Me Do" and "I Want to Hold Your Hand." And these songs were great, great pop songs. I mean, just catchy. You know, nothing profound in the lyrics, but mm. it was at the time it was it was new. Um, and I just love those songs they're catchy and great I think you know this, the simplicity of them is the is 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 there you know that's what I, I love finding just finding a catchy melody or something so simple and people overthink it sometimes I think you know and I yes, try to right. and sometimes it can just be something really simple and I mean you know I find it really it's really hard to be to be original these days so you just have to find something that people like and that you like that's it. that's that's all it is and and you know if it's if it's if it's something that you that you like and it's something that other people like or it's an idea that will, will capture people or I think you know that's it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a core sequence that no one's ever played before because you're never going to find that. You know, mm-hmm. that's the nature. I mean, this nature of music is just emotion. You know, if, if you get, if you can capture, that's why I look at it. That's why I, what I love is is I think it's music should be emotion. Whether that emotion is anger, whether it's happiness, whether it's sadness, whatever it is, it has to be built on an emotion. If it's not built on emotion, then for me it doesn't do anything and it's not worth it. It's, it's art at the end of the day, and you have to, you have to has to hit somebody you know has to have an impact wherever that impact is wherever that emotion is whichever way you where you're coming from it you know if there's no emotion then it's 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 no point that's my that's my view right and also ronan your music has this uh you know like the smooth characteristic which uh, gives emphasis on the strings the the high 
tinkling sound, you know, like uh, you're using glockenspiel or something like that. Yeah, that's uh, right, yeah. Very cinematic. So oh, do you also get this kind of reaction from other people uh, uh, telling you that your mu uh, music is kind of a cinematic and also has this fl uh, f floating feeling, you know, like it's, it's like you're flying when you're listening to it? Well, I think I, I've always, I've always um, liked. I mean, Coldplay really got into this, um, and you too. This idea of creating a bit of a, a landscape and creating a, and it's all about you know. For me, it's creating that tension and the again the emotion you know comes it comes into it, and sort of creating a platform of sound is you know that's it can just help to lift a song or you know, just to help to to form a base for 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 the melody to work off and i've tried to do that you know for, you know maybe yeah I, mean, I never didn't i didn't do it necessarily on purpose to for it to be cinematic but i can mm. see what you mean i can see what you mean and if uh, if if it If it, if it, well, I'd love the stuff to work on, on the, you know, films and TV. And TV. So it's certainly the last song on the, on the on the album. I could love you in my sleep. I managed. I go to get a string quart string quartet on that one. Yeah, the um, strings, right? And that's yeah. I mean, those th I mean, th three of those four are the uh, are three of the three of the guys from the Brodsky uh, string quartet. Um, who were an amazing quartet, but I couldn't put them down as that because it's not all four of them. One of them was away, so they got a friend in. <laughs> so, um, but they're kind of, I kind of know um, Paul, the, the Verona player, and he arranged the strings for me. And it's, um, it was a song that I'd recorded about three or four different ways uh, until I realized what I needed was a string quartet and voice version. That was the version that I was hearing in my head. So Paul very kindly did that. Did the arrangement that went into the studio and it's just unreal the sound that a string quartet it's such an amazing sound um and so i was very very lucky to have them on there and they did just you know they, they came down for next to no money at all i paid them uh, it was you know an insult really <laughs> these brilliant <laughs> musicians they only charged me very few hundred pounds that's all it was it was very they were very very kind to me um But, you know, I wouldn't... So, I mean, that's... One, one thing about the album is that nobody got paid to, to play on the album. The studio time was given to me for, for nothing. There was a friend of mine who said, look, if, if, if the album ever takes off and you ever make any money, you can give, give me some money then, but until then, let's just make the record. So I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to, to make the record without contributions from all the, from all the musicians that, 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 that joined in. And they all kind of got where I was coming from. A lot of them were people that I, that I, that I knew for three years all the bible code sundays boys are on there and my brothers are on there who i played with for years as well um and they kind of all knew where i was coming from and that's that it it's it was really created on you know the the sort of maybe that cinematic feel and everything that you're talking about it had a lot to do with the with the people that that played on it and how well they did the cello and i got a great great a great cello player came down yeah. she was great You know, because after sort of you know listening to people like Tom McRae um, and people like that who had who he plays with uh, with a with, with with a cellist, you know, and it's just such a great sound. So just the you know on its own, not part of a string quartet, just a, just a cello. And it's brilliant, and you can just certain instruments you can't you can only create a certain mood with that instrument. It's just it, there's nothing else can create the same thing in the same way. So, if you, you know, the cello is such a evocative instrument. It's great. It's fantastic. Perfect for, for some of the songs that I've got on there. Okay. And also, uh, I heard that you have new music coming soon. And also, uh, well, I want to ask your decision to release singles only. Uh, what's with that approach? Well, um, I've been looking at the way that People have been buying music, especially the you know online the downloads. Um, the way that people consume music if, uh, from iTunes and from those sorts of, uh, we found that that with the Bible codes has been very very much two or three songs. People down, are downloading individual songs rather than the album. But there's some songs in there which we spent a lot of money recording, which which don't get downloaded. I thought, well, the the concept of the album in a lot of ways when it comes to the digital version it's kind of dead unless you're you know unless you're 
you know, unless you're going to listen to an album and listen to the tracks in the right order, which mm-hmm. people don't, they, they tend to press shuffle and uh, yeah. listen to them. So it kind of makes a mockery of the whole idea of an album. Well, for me, you know, an album is a piece of art that you should listen to in the order that the artist put the songs in. I mean, I, I, do, I, do, the, I do the shuffle button thing myself. I'm not saying that I, I don't, but, um, but that's kind of what it's proven to me is that, is that rather than wait, say, two years and release 10 songs in one go, why not just release songs as and when you write them and just and just release them? Um, so there'd be like maybe at least, I mean, my aim is to have at least one song a month, if not more, um, throughout the year. So basically, by the end of the year, you've got 12 songs. So you can't really release an, an album a year. People don't really do that these days. People expect you to release an album every two years. But this way, people have got a constant flow of music. And I thought, well, if it, then if people want to follow my career and what I do and what I release, people like what I do, they've only got to commit probably less than a pound a month, you know, over the over the court. You know, it's just a pound a month is all it will cost them. And that's it's maybe with the, these days, with people, not everybody has lots of money. But there's a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of financial um problems in the world that maybe this makes it more manageable for people to enjoy music rather than outlaying 10 pound or whatever it is um, in one go they they can just pay a pound and get a new song and then i think it also will keep the standard up the quality it'll make it'll keep me on the top of my game because i because you're effectively releasing singles every every song is is a is a is a, is a standalone piece of work I've got my I've got a friend of mine, my, my best friend, um, is, you know, who's been, 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 been my best friend since I was about three years old. Um, he he's an artist, and uh, he's the guy that did the piece of art that's the front cover of Strawberry Hill. That was an existing piece of artwork that just fitted the songs perfectly. So um, he, he let me he kindly let me use it for the front cover. Well, he's going to be doing bespoke artwork for each song. So each each song is going to have its own artwork to go with it, and I just want to make the songs a bit more each song a bit more special. So you're not you're not releasing ten. You know, people tend to release an album maybe twelve songs on it. You know, you, these days at least half of those songs would would be songs that they wouldn't release as a single. The the filler songs, you know. So as you say, I think it's, cheat, it's cheating people out of out of quality. I think you should keep the quality up and and. By releasing each song, you have to, you have to be proud of every song you're going to put out because it's, it's not you can't hide a song behind other songs. You're not put, you know what I mean. You're not releasing a single and then like a load of other songs to go with it. You you know you're releasing each song on the, on its own merit and it's judged on its own merit. And I think that for me, I think it'll keep me on my toes and keep the standard up. You know, oh, that, that's 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 the hope anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Ronan, talking about uh, you know, like uh, that approach, uh, um, it's also an interesting uh, marketing approach because a lot of artists uh, have to realize that with the changing technology and also you know the the whole economic thing, you have to be a little bit inventive, right? These days. Yeah, I think I think that um, the way people buy music has changed. So why are we still Doing things the the old way. Why are we still why are we still releasing albums it, when in you know I think <clears throat> if you can listen to an album, I mean I'll, I've got the, I've got the idea to release an album as an app, and it's two tracks effectively side A and side B. You can't flick, you can't shuffle, you can't. You have to listen to the whole of side A and then the whole of side B, just like you used to on a, on a vinyl record. Mm-hmm. You used to put an album on. Because the nature of lifting up the needle and putting on a different track, you would just let no more very you just let the album play from start to finish. So I've got the idea of releasing an album as an app that people can download, and it's effectively the vinyl version of the album. That that then becomes an album, then you know it's an album because you've got a track listing. But people I would like people if because I'm going to. What I'm doing is I'm trying to build a community of people on Facebook or wherever it might be on Twitter, um, and that's how we that's how I will communicate with them. So people can be all around the world. Um, it doesn't matter 
basically geography doesn't have any any bearing in this, you know, because you can join in with what I'm doing from anywhere in the world. Because and I want people to interact through Facebook. I, you know, I want to talk to people, get their opinions, get discussions going. And people, if if I'm releasing single songs all the time, if people want to collect some songs into a, an album, say or like a playlist. And say, hey, hey, guys! I think this, you know, maybe if people, if enough people are interested in what I'm doing, they want to interact with each other. They can. I want it to be an interactive community, um, and people can, you know, give me their their opinions on the songs and, and what they like, what they don't like, and you know, and it will help me as an artist to to, to grow. And the idea is that it's it's a because basically, if, if I release a song and people don't like it there's another song coming along in a few weeks time it's not you're not that's not set in stone and you know you, you've got you've got to listen to that stuff for two years you know it's like there's more stuff new stuff all the time mm-hmm. and you can also react to things in the news and things that that happen in the world you know I've found myself going to to really going to record an album and realising that some of the songs are written two or three years ago, they have, they have to be dropped. The good songs have to be dropped because they're not relevant anymore. Because the subject matter is something that happened two or three years ago. Yeah. That now isn't, isn't, but it was a good song at the time. If, if, and if I was if I do what I was doing now, that song would have would have been out there. It would have, we would have done well, you know, or possibly. But the the, you know, the so you can you can it can be a lot more current. You can react to things instantly, and so I just think it just for me it just seems like the best way forward. And you know, as long as I've got a studio I can use on a regular basis, and, and the quality of, of recording is 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 high, and, and hopefully the quality of the material is high, then hopefully people will get will get what I, get what I'm doing, and and will join in. I'm, I'm hoping it will be a fun experience for for people to be involved with. They're not just buying my music, they're not just not just sort of, you know like they're they're involved in a in a community it's in a it's a whole it's an ongoing movement yeah because i think that the music community is about you know the the musicians the listeners uh the people who actually write about uh, what the musicians are doing right so it's a big community uh, in general yeah yeah i think it's i think these days there used to be that the uh, the artist would be would be this untouchable person who released records you know it was it was the media with the way it was you know something like Elvis Presley the mystique around him was was half of what, what built his his legend you know people just couldn't see him they couldn't go to him they couldn't you know he was just this mysterious figure and that was all very, all part of that that era and that's what made him so amazing and but not it's not it's not it's not the case now because now we can all communicate in the second, you know, I can, you know, we, we, you can talk to, you can send a message to everybody's phones, straight to their phones. You know, when you, a fan letter to somebody's house, you send a message digitally to their phone and they get it immediately or to their computer. That, that communication is a powerful tool and, but it should go all ways. We're all in this together. It's all, we're all trying to be better, with, you know, with better artists, better journalists, better people. And people, and, you know, music is a big part of a lot of people's lives. And it's how they express themselves with, you know, the listening to listening to certain songs and listening to certain artists and help trying to find different ways of defining themselves or defining things that happen to them. Moments in their lives can be defined by music. And... By communicating, all of everybody, everybody communicating, it just it, it just it just feeds into it. it you know, we all feed it, feed off each other, and the whole thing can it be. It's an interesting concept. I, I, I'm going to try out. I'm not sure it was going to work, but I like the theory of it. I like the idea that I'm not just writing songs in my bedroom and putting them out there and saying buy this stuff. You know, it's not as impersonal as that. It's just, it's not like this is this is this is this is what's going on in my head, and you'll give me money for it. You know, it's not like that. It's a communication process. And well, that's 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 what I want it to be anyway. These days, because of a lot of songs that we have, instead of you know, there are things that they can't uh, they can't tell you. You know, like they, if they want 
tell you something. They couldn't say it. So they use songs in order to communicate what they feel. And then it's exactly. up to you to, to, to fill in the blanks. So I, I think that's what's happening to young people these days. Well, this is what I mean. In the, in the One More Time video, there's, there's a guy that, that holds up, a friend of mine, he, hold, um, he holds up the sign that says, I miss you. And the next one says, that's all, which are the lines from the song. Yeah. He, knew, he knew the song. He's a, he's a friend, a good close friend of mine. And he loved that song because he, he, he'd lost his mum a few years before. And he said that lot, when, when I said to him, right, what would you say if you, if you could see her, her one more time? And then he said, that, that line is what I'd say. I miss you, that's all. So that's what he chose. So he actually chose a line from the song within the song. It was kind of a weird kind of life imitating art, imitating life kind of situation where, where, the boat. So for him, it defined everything he wanted to say, everything that he thought about losing his mum and, and everything. That song for him summed it up. And that, I, I'm very, very proud of that because it's a, obviously a huge moment for him in, 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 in his life. And my song spoke to him. You know, I mean, that is, that's a, a massive achievement. You, could, you know, people writing songs and, and writing lyrics, you want to communicate, you want to, you want to write something that means something to somebody. Yeah. That's the ultimate prize. And, and with that, with that song, I'd achieved that with that guy. And, and I, and I love that fact that, 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 it, that the song did that. And so I, I want to continue to do that. We want to continue to write songs that mean something to people that maybe, you know, have an impact on people and maybe can help people. If the, or do you know just something that that hits an emotion in them? You know, that's that's all. That's all an artist really, really can never really ask. Any any form of art, any art form, you want it to mean something to somebody. Exactly. And Ronan, where can people buy your albums uh, or music these days? Um, I do have it all up on iTunes and uh, Amazon. MP3 and every all these places. Um, I don't, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to go with the with the regular releases. Whether that they'll be iTunes or whether it might be another route, a more direct method. Because if I'm releasing single songs, I, you know, I don't want to give a huge chunk of the money to somebody else. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll need to. The idea would would be to try and release things. It's a much more direct. Um, process so people can basically buy direct f from the artist oh, there's, there's a few sites that do band camp is one of them that take a very very minimum cut uh, but this is you know at the end of the day I want to be able to you know live off writing or writing and releasing my own music that's what, that's, that's what I want to do I want to make a career from it you know so I don't, I don't think I want to give half the money to Apple <laughs> <laughs> because it, it just means it's I, I'm, I might not make enough to continue to be able to do it that's that's the, that's the thing there's not going to be a hell of a lot of money to go around as it is um, so you know I don't know so I'm, I might there might be I haven't quite worked out all the ins and outs of how I'm going to do this yet but um, any details will be on my Facebook page um, which is facebook.com forward slash Rainer McManus um, is it Ronan Manus Music? Maybe Ronan Manus Music. Um, and on my website, which is ronanmanus.com. Oh, okay. and, it's, uh, and it's M C M A N U S. When for the family research, I realised there's a there's, a, there's an extra letter that doesn't need to be there, so I've changed my name. <laughs> oh, so basically, it's now M C, right? Without an A. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. My dad added the A. Mm -hmm. Years ago, he was a singer himself. He added the A as a stage name, but then the A continued in all our, all of our me and my brothers. We all got the extra A in our surname. But from doing family research and meeting other McManus family around the world, no one else has the A in there, and it's a different surname. <laughs> so, exactly because with the A, it's more like a Scottish name. The MC is more right. like an Irish name, right? Exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. My, my dad just thought that MC was an abbreviation of MAC. So why have the abbreviation? We can have the full one. I didn't think. I don't think he quite fully understood that it it is a different surname. <laughs> so, 
my brothers are all MAC and I'm the only one that's MC, <laughs> but the rest of the family and they're all around the world. The Australians, the Canadians, the, the you know, people all around the world, all, all our cousins are all MC, M-A-N-U-S. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. So I've changed it. So it's, yeah, it's, it, that's the only, that's the only difference. But on iTunes, it's still MAC. So I might take all that stuff down in time and make it all available from the one place. Um, so I've, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to go about it, but all, all information will be, will be, will go out via Twitter, Facebook and my, and my website. So any major, any major changes of, of availability of the songs will be, they, I will let as many people know as I possibly can via the social media. That at the end of the day is going to be, my Facebook page is probably going to be the center point of the whole thing. That's probably the best place where people can communicate, people can find out new information where I will let people know where I'm playing, what songs are, are coming, how my progress and it's such a powerful tool. Yeah, it is. And uh, also, Ronan, what's your message to our listeners who are listening or is going to listen to this? Um, message would be uh, would be to, well, what I'm trying to do with this music is to try to to communicate with people directly, and and I just not doesn't have to be my music that they listen to, but listen to some listen to music that means something to people that means something to you that, that you know search out maybe don't be afraid to search out artists that no one else knows and explore because there's so much stuff out there because of the way the music business works now the stuff that gets put out into the charts into public domain isn't necessarily the best music that's true <laughs> it's it's the stuff that's going to make the most money for the people that are releasing it but a lot of the love and heart has gone out of the music of the music business but there are still people out there trying to do it band camp is a great place to go just discover artists that no one else knows and maybe you'll discover something that no one else knows and that that is a great thing it doesn't have to be me <laughs> just <laughs> but just just you know there is still good music out there a lot of people are kind of fallen out of love with, with the music business and with music in general they don't think it means as much as it used to mean there are still yeah. people do making music that does mean a lot and it can mean a lot to you as much as you know people used to care the, your record companies used to care <laughs> and they don't people big small big business now so you you know the, but there are still artists making music that just for themselves and not for money making purposes yeah. so yeah, don't, don't be afraid to explore new artists is what, is what is the message I would